We have a variable that is set equal to an array of objects with the key value pairs. Here we have a pure function with a parameter that returns an array method that loops through the array to find the properties that return true for is yummy. Congratulations if you understood everything I said. If not, you better watch this video. If JavaScript is the first real programming language you learn, it can be hard to wrap your head around all the new expressions and words. But at the end of the day, programming is just having an input, doing something with it and then having an output. This is the same thing with something we all instinctively know and understand, cooking. So I'm going to explain the different JavaScript terms in a way you can understand if you have a basic understanding of food and cooking. So let's get right into it. We have our code editor and our console open. Our code editor is like our kitchen and our console is like the last counter before the food goes on the table. One of the first things we do when we program JavaScript is declaring variables. A variable is just a fancy word for thing that can be changed. So in our kitchen, a variable could be something like a bag, the value and what's in the bag can be changed. What we also write in JavaScript are either primitives or objects. Let's start with primitives. As I said, in JavaScript, we have something that we call primitives. This is not really a word you have to remember, but you have to know that we have six primitives. String, number, boolean, null, undefined, and simple. String is just a different expression for things. In our kitchen, this could be an apple or an egg. In JavaScript, a string is not just a word, but also can be an emoji or a number, which is a little bit confusing because we also have a primitive type called a number. You can recognize a string because it has quotation marks. Some people like double quotes and some single quotes. It really doesn't matter. So what's the difference between a string and a number? A number is looked at as a number where you can apply math. And the number as a string is like this string. It's actually a thing that's a number. So if we add 5 plus 5, we get 10. But if we add 6 as a string plus 6 as a string, we get 6, 6. A Boolean is easy to understand. It's either true or false. And again, it's not a string that says true or false. It's actually true or false without quotes. So either in our kitchen we have sugar or we don't have sugar. Null and undefined are ways to express that there is nothing. It can't really be compared to anything in our kitchen because null and undefined is just nothing. The difference though is that undefined is the expression that comes usually from JavaScript itself, mostly because the programmer made a mistake and null is an explicit statement that there is nothing. Symbol is the last one and quite complicated to explain, but it's a primitive that is unique. At the end of the day though, we almost never use symbol, so I might cover that in another video. So as a summary, primitives are simple pieces of data. Let's get a little bit more complicated with objects. Objects are more complex types and here we will go over what is an array, object and a function. And yes, the category object has a subcategory that's also called object. But try to bear with me. We can spot an array because of the square brackets. Usually we set an array equal to a variable. In our kitchen, an array would be something like a bag of food. An array is a pack of similar things. The way we pack it, the way we sort it and what's actually in there can be changed though. We can not only put strings in arrays, but also numbers or any other type. An object looks very similar to an array, but it has curly braces. An object is not a pack of different things, it's more an element that is made out of different things like a sandwich. A sandwich has bread, meat and a sauce. In JavaScript, we do that with key value pairs. Let's just have a look at how our array and object look like in the console. Here we have the array and here the object. Like with the array, we can put different types in our objects. We can also put an array in an object or an array in an object in an array in an object. We can access the different elements with what's called properties. A very common way how we work with JavaScript is that we have an array of objects. An example in our kitchen would be not just apples in a bag, but different sandwiches in a bag. Damn, I'm starting to get hungry. Anyway, let's continue with what are functions. A function is easy to understand. We have data as input, wrench it through the function and something else comes out at the end of it. So a function is like an automated tool, like a blender. 
We have many different types of functions, but more about that in a video about JavaScript functions, which is linked down below. In JavaScript, we have different ways we can use functions. Either we use pure functions or impure functions. A pure function is where we have a dedicated input, which we call parameter, and a dedicated output on our return statement. Like a meat grinder, we have a dedicated in and output. An impure function is where we, for example, have a variable declared outside of the function and just take it in without using parameters. More like whatever this thing is called, where we don't really have a dedicated input. When to use a pure function and an impure function is a topic for a whole other video. But in short, try to use pure functions because they're simpler, but it's not a huge issue if you have an impure function. I just wanted to go quickly over some other expressions you should have heard before we go and have an example with hot dogs. Operators are math things, like plus, minus and so on, but also increment and decrement. I won't go into detail how loops work, but with loops we do actions over and over. Mostly we will use loops to do a thing to each element in an array, like in this example console login every element in the array to the console. So if you run the loop, we can see every element gets logged to the console. Methods are like built-in hidden functions that come with JavaScript and are sometimes hard to spot. There are string methods, number methods, and array methods, and more. And they make writing code easier and more condensed. I have a video about array methods in the description down below if you're interested. But with the for each method we have here, we can see that the loop we wrote up here is now way more condensed even though it has the same functionality. So let's have an example where we put all that to work. Here we have a variable that is set equal to an array of objects with key value pairs. Down here we have a pure function with a parameter that returns an array method that loops through the array to find the properties that return true for is yummy. This function gets called with an argument and gets console locked. And now if you run the function, we can see only the yummy hot dogs get locked on the console. And not this weird one here with two breads and without a sauce, because we all know a hot dog without a sauce just sucks. I hope you were able to follow along what I just said in the last 30 seconds. And if you were able to remember, you recognize that the description of what I just said in the last 30 seconds was the same thing I said in the intro of the video. I hope now you understood a little bit better what I said there. Of course, this was just a little look at what JavaScript is. There is way much more to learn. I hope this video helped. If it did, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.